what is going on you guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to take a look at how you can have multiple app icon support for your app so here's the app we're going to be building we've got the instagram icon we're going to tap this it'll tell us that we've set our app icon to facebook we're going to go back to the home screen and there you have it it has changed here's uber and that of course has changed as well We'll also talk about different uh, image formats that are supported. So you can see this one's empty here. When we tap it, it actually falls back to the original app icon. And now uh, we'll take a look at how to implement this. So that said, make sure you first and foremost, destroy that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Stick around till the end of the video so you can figure out how to have multiple app icons and uh, really make an impression on your users. That said, let's jump straight away into Xcode. All right, let's get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS here. Let's go ahead and call this multiple app icons. Make sure, of course, your language is Swift, Lifecycle UI kit and interface is Storyboard. This also works for Swift UI in case you were wondering, but we'll stick with Storyboard in this video. Go ahead and continue. And we'll toss this on to our desktop. And let me go ahead and expand my Xcode window here. Let's give this a run in the currently open simulator. You'll see a empty app icon pop up here and our Yay. app actually launch just like that. So the first thing we need to do before we can bring in uh, alternate app icons as they are called, we need to have a, a primary app icon. So if we go into this uh, XC assets uh, file here, you'll see we have an app icon. So we can go ahead and delete this. And I have this tool open up here. Uh, which is the uh, asset catalog. There's a free uh, website where you can generate a, a asset catalog. And I just brought in the Instagram logo from Google images. So I'm going to create this and it's going to drop it right on my desktop. And the first thing we're going to do is drag that in. And the reason you need this is, is before you can try to set a alternate app icon, uh, the system requires that you actually have a primary icon. So I'm going to open that up and drag in app icon just like that. We're gonna go ahead and hit command R, see the app icon right there, which we in fact do. Now the next thing we wanna do is bring in these other app icons that I've got here. So I've got uh, the Facebook logo, Google and Uber. No need to name them anything else. And in fact, you need to drag them into your project directly and not into your XE assets make sure copy items if needed and your target membership are checked. Go ahead and drag those in and we can finally expand our Xcode window. And uh, let's go ahead and write the code to actually allow the user to change their icon. So what do we need to do for that? So in our view controller, I'm just gonna do a for loop and just list out these uh, four buttons, rather three buttons for uh, Facebook, Uber and uh, Google. I guess four if we want the user to be able to change back to the original app icon. You probably wanna do this in a for loop. So I'm just gonna do it this way and be lazy. So we're gonna say images are Facebook. Let's spell that correctly. Uber, Google, and uh, this one, we'll go ahead and call it I guess we're gonna to need to bring it in again, but I'm gonna call it a logo. And the reason we're gonna call it logo is we're gonna drag it in instead of using this app icon key, because sometimes that's a little finicky and doesn't work. So we're gonna call this logo. And let me just grab that Instagram logo and drag it into this image set. Now notice uh, we're putting logo in the XC assets catalog, whereas everything else is uh, directly in our project. Uh, and now what I'm going to do right below it is we're going to say for uh, image in, rather we can say for uh, index and image in images.enumerated. We're just going to create a button every time. We're going to say is a UI button and it's going to have a frame CG rect. We're just going to say, uh, I don't know, 30. This will be the view.safe area insets.top, uh, 120, 120. And here we're gonna want to uh, add, rather multiply, or we can add, I guess, the CG float of the index multiplied by 130. That way these uh, buttons are not on top of each other. 
Let's go ahead and add this as a sub view, just like that. Don't forget, of course, to set your actual image. So I'm gonna say the, we can just say set image actually right in here. We can do background image or image. I'm gonna stick with image. Image will be uh, named image. And this is gonna be for normal. And I believe that's enough to get our buttons to actually show up here. So let's go ahead and run. And we should see our uh, four icons right there. All right, so we can definitely see them. Let me push this down from the top a little bit more. And let's see why Google is not appearing. Did I spell Google wrong? So this one is a JPEG. We'll find out in just a moment if uh, JPEGs work. It looks like they're not at the moment. So that'll be a nice little uh, lesson right there in itself. So let's go back to that view controller. And let me say from the Y, this is gonna be view, safe area, insets top. Let me just add, uh, let's just add 120 to it. I'll say 200 so it's not touching the top of the screen just like that. And every time the button, is uh, tapped, we're gonna do something. So we're gonna assign its tag, which will just be a unique number at this point for the index. So we're gonna say self uh, action will be did tap app icon. Well, let's actually create this down below before I type it there. So we're gonna say objective C private function did tap app icon which is gonna have a sender, which will be the button that was tapped to actually invoke that function. So here we're gonna have did tap app icon. The event will be touch up inside just like that. And in here, we can actually go ahead and change our app icon. So we're gonna say uh, if the sender dot tag is one, what do we make the first one? Facebook, we're gonna to wanna to change our app icon to Facebook. So we're gonna say UI application shared set alternate app icon to Facebook, which is the image name actually that we dragged in right there. And here we have a completion handler that will bring in an optional error if something goes wrong. So we'll say if, or we'll say guard, um, let's see, guard error equals nil, else return. Here we'll say, icon updated, and if something uh, does go wrong and there is an error, we're gonna print out something went wrong. Now we haven't done the absolute most important piece yet, and that is defining some stuff in our info P list. So open this up, right click and open it up as source code. And I actually copied it beforehand, and I'm just gonna paste it in and we're gonna talk through it and we're gonna add uh, another one ourselves. So let me actually get rid of the Uber one here. We're gonna add this manually. I just copy and pasted it for the sake of time. But basically we're bringing in this thing called CF bundle icons. That itself points to a dictionary and the dictionary has another key in it called CF bundle alternate icons. We have the name of the icon then we have the actual icon files and that's the name of the image file. So if we right click this and hit uh, open as property list, you can see what it looks like in this view down here. So we've got icon files. It's iOS 5 because iOS 5, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is when this was first supported. I think that was uh, uh, many, many years ago, but it'll say iOS 5 here, regardless of why it says it. you can ignore it. Uh, this will work in your case. So. Here we have uh, our long dictionary. This is the actual name we pass into the UI application function, whereas this Facebook represents the image name itself. So let's go ahead without further ado, command R to build and run. And we'll see our buttons here. We tap on Facebook and we can see that it says, you've changed the icon for multiple app icons, which is our app name. You see the Facebook logo there. When we go back to the home screen, it is now Facebook. So looking pretty cool. So let's go and set up a Uber, uh, Instagram, and a good lesson here, which I accidentally crept into the video is your files need to be PNGs. JPEGs will not uh, appear. Um, it looks like they don't appear on the button. We'll double check if uh, the actual uh, function call will take it to. So let's go back to the view controller and let's set up those other, um, those other tags here. So we're gonna say else. So that'll be the second one, which is gonna be Uber. Then we're gonna have Google. Then we're gonna have 
the standard one. So here is Google and here's the standard one. Let's fill these guys out. So the second one is gonna be two. The app icon we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set is Uber. This one will be three. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set Google. And this one right below it will be four. And instead of setting Instagram here, we're gonna go ahead and actually set nil. And what this will do is we're basically saying we don't want an alternate app icon, AKA revert to uh, the original, which is the primary. Then we're gonna jump into our uh, info P list and I'm gonna see if I can get away with copy and pasting this. I should be able to just like that, beautiful. Let's go ahead and rename all this stuff. So this will be Uber, this will be Google, and I still don't know if the JPEG for Google will work, but I'm sure we'll find out in just a moment. We're gonna make this one Uber as well. We're gonna expand this and make this one Google. And the order of the entries in here does not matter in the case of multiple app icons. So go ahead and run that and let's see what we get. So we're gonna tap Uber. All right, beautiful. We can change it to Uber, looking great. And let's have this one, even though it's not appearing. And it actually, uh, if it can't resolve the app icon, it falls back to the primary. So you'll see here uh, that we actually uh, got icon updated, which is a little misleading because in our view controller, what we are doing for three is we're trying to set Google and we actually are updating it, but it's falling back to the original primary icon, not Google. So that's a lesson that your uh, images should be PNGs. Let's go back to Uber, make sure that's appearing. And let's go back to the last one, which should set it as nil. And that will be our actual app icon. And uh, there you really have it. That's how you can have multiple app icons in your app. Super, super simple. Um, just a few entries in your info P list, your property list file here. And the function off of UI application shared is set alternate uh, icon name. Keep in mind your icons should be PNGs and in your project itself and not in the XC assets. The only thing in the XC assets you need is your primary app icon image set. And uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, this is really great if you want to offer like a light mode icon and a dark mode icon. Many apps do that. You can also offer themes for your app if you want a different background color. I know Instagram recently did an Easter egg where you can use uh, the original Instagram app icon instead of the new one that they have now. Um, so there's a bunch of cool little things you can do with this. Definitely a little more of a gimmicky feature, but users really like it. It's a nice little Easter egg to throw in. So that all said, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you haven't hit the like button already, make sure to do so for that awesome YouTube algorithm. Comment down below if you've got any feedback, any video suggestions, if you just want to say hi, if you want to boost the video and the algorithm, all of it helps. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for daily Swift, Swift UI, iOS videos. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.